It's Pete from Cheap Homesteading and uh, I'm in the garage this morning and I really have to get the valve on my Massey 50 tractor. Uh, I just gotta get it on. Uh, if I don't get it on now, I'm not gonna have time and then um, we won't get the full benefit from the equipment I do have. So uh, let's go. Okay, so I didn't have much time to build this thing here. And this is the piece that you saw in the other video that I got into the scrap bin. I drilled the holes, uh, I put the plate on, and I reinforced it. There's two lock nuts. Oh, and two bolts like this. Okay. I kind of miscalculated. I needed to put a little bit of a spacer in here because because I'll show you there's a rib in the fender. I'm going to tighten these up and then we're going to drill the hole for the very back of the bracket. Uh, I only wanted to basically drill one hole in the fender. I didn't want to drill like a whole bunch. I don't want the fender to look like Swiss cheese. Like it's the fender's actually in good shape and it'd be a shame to really destroy it, you know? Okay, I'm not a picky man by any means, but I probably would have moved it just a hair farther this way. But my, it, my hand falls nicely to it, for sure. And especially when I'm looking back, I'm gonna have my three point hitch loader behind. It really falls nice because the back of my elbow's on the seat and I'm looking back. So I think this is a go. We're gonna bolt this down. Uh -uh. I think that might actually be the size. It'd be nice to find locking nuts though. There's one there. One more. Need one more. These bolts were collected from my dad and I had a whole bunch because I worked at a dealership that you just end up with a bunch of bolts sitting in a pail. And then you give 20 bucks for the pail and you would get a whole pail of bolts. And that has become very, very handy. A lot of people go into homesteading thinking they're gonna to make tons and tons of money. And if I only buy this new tractor, um, I'm gonna make more money with it. And the problem is, they buy this new tractor and what if you don't make any money with it? Or you have a bad year? Uh, you still have that payment on that tractor. And I think people have to get the mindset of just doing with what they have. And if they need something, like I, I think this tractor starts to become a necessity. Uh, if they need something, they really have to uh, think of the cheapest way they can achieve that without spending a ton of money and not having a bunch of debt. Debt is the killer. Stressing about money. Um, I, I don't want that. You never know what tomorrow holds and you may not have tomorrow to pay off that. Or you may be sick and you can't make money or and you still have that payment. So doesn't mean I don't have debt but you gotta be careful for sure. Okay, let's look in the box. Get these out. Uh, those are to go to the back couplers. This one is my pressure in. Oh, by the way, uh, you're supposed to buy a block for up here uh, for Massey to get your pressure off. But the old guy that owned the tractor before me, he ran a wood splitter off of this port and the return port on that side. 
and this is a closed center valve so that means um, there's open center valves and there's closed center valves an open center valve uh, you hook in line so there's constantly flow through the valve and a closed center valve is basically you have a pressure line that goes up and it only activates when you push it you don't need flow through it okay so I am going to plug off these two lines uh, because this one has a float position which means that it'll follow the ground but normally this would go to your boom lift uh, but since my three-point hitch loader will not have a boom lift because it's three-point hitch lifting it uh, I am going to put it to the um, so I'm going to put it to the bucket so that means I'm going to plug these off so I don't get a face full of oil On these valves, there's a built-in relief valve, and there's a relief valve in the tractor. So even if it deadheads, it's gonna have lots of chance to blow off the relief valve. Okay, so now we need to hook in my feed line up to the valve, up to there. You don't want dirt through your valve and all kinds of stuff, so you gotta make sure it stays clean. Blow out your lines. With these fittings, there's a taper in here and there's a taper in the elbow. You don't have to put Teflon on them because the taper is what actually seals them. Okay, so my inlet is tight and installed. I am going to have to uh, put loom on that, I think, so it doesn't end up wearing because it's close enough to the tire that uh, Something like that could happen. Okay, so throw that through there. Gonna run that through. And since I'm not going to use these brackets, I'm just going to zip tie it so it's totally out of the way. I'm going to take this one off because I got that size in my fitting. So I don't need this. But we are going to hang on to all the pieces because it never you never know when things like that are handy again. You'll be looking and go, I seen that, I wish I kept that. So that is the first steps to hoarding, but in homesteading, we call it being prepared or stocking up, use fancy words, you know? Okay, so now you can see why I needed loom on the back so it wouldn't rub and wear through. To go to all this bother and have lines that are rubbing and leaking um, prematurely, you don't want that. That's just annoying. You want to use the tractor. We are on to the remote valves. Okay. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hook it to the valve first. And then we're going to run our hoses. And then we're going to hook it to our uh, couplers. And then we'll... Uh, and then we will drill the fender so we can try to set it in such a way that uh, the hoses hang nice and they don't hang in the road or a place that can get caught on brush or anything in the bush. Okay, so I'm gonna try to put that there and then mark with a screwdriver into the fender. So that is right here. 
Okay, so now we're just going to line this hole up with this hole. And then I'm going to scrape in here with a screwdriver. And that's where the other hole is going to be. So I got to go get the drill. Okay, so make sure you wear your safety glasses. No one needs to head off to the hospital and get a big chunk of steel out of their eyeball. Don't do it. Wear your glasses. Okay, so. I'll give you a tip. You go a little bit bigger on the drill bit and uh, lining up the holes is so much easier. If you go the exact same size, uh, it's not gonna fit. That drill bit's driving me nuts. Okay, so now we gotta get this one drilled out. Uh-oh. was easy. I got some fairly big washers to go through. Okay. and look for my Teflon. That's awful. What do I do? I set things down. Oh, it's on the tire. On this side. When I'm at home, I'm a little bit of a get her done kind of person. Uh, I am a farm equipment mechanic, but when I'm at home, I resemble more like a farmer. <laughs> Cheap is all heck, you know? I am. I am a farm equipment mechanic, but when I'm at home and it's my own stuff, man, I think I um, resemble more like a, uh, a farmer. Just get her done, do what you have to do and do it as cheap as possible, you know? And there's a reason farmers kind of had that reputation. A lot went through hard times and they had to do what they had to do uh, just to survive. Uh, there's just no question about that. And it worked. Um, and it's so funny now, everyone thinks they gotta spend tons of money to do all this stuff and because they do because they have to spend more money to make less money half the time uh, than a farmer way back that just had a little bit of a few cows a little bit of land to make a living now you can't you have to spend more they say to make more and I, I think it's gone nuts honestly it really has. Okay. Yeah, first. Okay, so this is, I think this is it. Tighten it up yet. You'll see why. Okay, so the reason I didn't want you to 
tighten these up because, see these are pointing the wrong way. I gotta turn this line so it's pointing the right way. There. So then we can uh, put this on. One, two, put this one on. Well, she's stuck. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna bolt this sucker down. starting to come along quite nicely. So now we're gonna go give this a try, see if uh, it's got any pressure at all, and we'll see if I can get this thing started too. <laughs> Hasn't been started for a long time, so let's try it. Okay, so that is 800 PSI just lifting my blade up. Um, if it's sitting on the ground, there is no pressure pretty much at all. So basically, when I lift my three-point hitch uh, loader up, the weight of the loader is probably more than my blade and is farther out. So I'll probably have about 1,000 PSI to move the bucket back and forth. Uh, but when the bucket's on the ground, I won't be able to adjust it which can work because I can just, uh, it'll still drop the bucket. Uh, and then as soon as I go to uh, lift it, I can curl the bucket back. So I think this could work. So there you go. All you have to do is raise the hitch uh, and the weight on the hitch at least give me 800 pounds. And I think that's definitely enough to run the uh, bucket. So now we just gotta get the three-point hitch loader in and get that all fitted up, but that's another video. So you guys have a good one.